Yep, yesterday was a good day. One of my favorite moments of the entire day. I was in the middle of browsing a record store at one point, and I checked my phone, and there just happened to be email notifications from two of my closest friends. It's just, you know, positive stimuli coming at me from all different directions. It was just that kind of a day. again to Tom's Hit Parade. As you can see, surprise, I'm in Portland. Yes, uh, here at Music Millennium, of course, uh, waiting to walk into the door. My mask ready to apply to my face. My mouth pajamas, as it were. And uh, yeah, I was expecting more of a line uh, because they only, for now, they have a maximum of 15 people in the store at any one time. I don't know if they uh, <coughs> fudge that for the fully vaccinated or not, but uh, when I get here in time for, uh, to get to the front of the line as, as much as I could. But, uh, yeah, this is the normal entrance, but it is, they are using, you know, navigational control measures, I guess you'd say, and the other entrance, the vinyl entrance, is the entrance for now, and this is only the exit. So, uh, but, yeah, getting ready to head into the stove. Okay, after about two hours, two hours and ten minutes, uh, I'm done at Music Millennium, uh, did real good. I actually had a CD to return. I bought it uh, by mail. They sent it by mail, and I happened to come into another copy of it, so I was able to return it, even though it was like three months. Uh, very nice. I mean, it was still sealed, so... And I have the receipt. Keep the receipts, people. Yeah, I came out of there pretty good. Uh, made a good haul. Uh, bulked up on a couple of discographies I'd been hoping to bulk up on. Uh, and found a couple of records I'd kind of been looking for. Uh, found a few things I wasn't looking for and decided to buy anyway. Uh, so, yeah, and I bought, oh gosh, must have been 12, 15 CDs and two LPs and a cassette. And I spent $53 net uh, with uh, the, the, was it 12 or $14 uh, credit that I had for returning the item. So I made, made out real good. So, yeah. Lots of stuff for my money. So, anyway, I am heading on over to lunch at the City State Diner, one of my favorite places. Uh, the only choice for today, since it's in walking distance between the two record stores I wanted to go to. So, so uh, yeah, talk to you in a bit. Well, guess what I had for lunch at the City State Diner? Yes, I had my favorite sandwich, The Count. It's as good as it always is. Wonderful food there. Uh, and it was busy. Imagine that at, at the lunch hour on a Saturday. Go figure. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. while I was eating lunch, I was deliberating whether or not to go back to Music Millennium and pick up something that I had seen, was very strongly, heavily considering, uh, but I decided against it, mostly because it was cost-effective. Um, I will probably tell you guys about it in uh, the main part of my video coming up here. Okay, so I forgot until I was actually editing the video that I was going to tell you about the thing that I passed up on at uh, Music Millennium and almost went back to get. It was actually a boxed set of six Cat Stevens CDs, uh, and it was $40. They wanted $40 for it. They were all the remastered CDs, and the discs were in like-new condition. Uh, but uh, two reasons I passed up on it. Uh, the two albums that I cared most about in that set I already own on CD, and also, um, they had some of the individual CDs for that set uh, price tagged for $5. So if I got all six CDs individually, they didn't have all six, but for the sake of argument, if they had, that would have only cost me $30. So I would have been paying $10 for a box that was not in pristine condition. It wasn't in crappy condition, but still, you know, it had you know, a little bit of age on it. So, yeah, that's why I decided to pass up on that uh, Cat Stevens box set. So, there you go. But yes, as you can see, I have arrived at Everyday Music, uh, which will be my final stop of the day until my brother comes by in uh, about two hours. So I'll spend about two hours here. So, uh... so yes, another day of fun up in Portland yesterday, and I, I never really intended to keep it a surprise from you guys. It just so happens that I was able to avoid mentioning it until now, until the day after I was there. Uh, yeah, we had been kind of batting the idea around of going up to Portland since, basically since the first of the year, really, since New Year's. 
uh, but we didn't really have a hard set date until about a month ago. But yes, yesterday was the day. Had a lot of fun. Uh, it was just a one-day trip, just up there and back, same day, uh, and followed kind of the same plan of attack as the last time we went up there, which was 10 months ago, if you can believe that. Yes, I was having serious Portland withdrawals after 10 months, as you can imagine. If being used to going up there two or three times a year pre-pandemic, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, same plan of attack. Uh, we drove up there first thing in the morning, and my brother dropped me off at Music Millennium, which is over on the east side of town on Birdside. And he went off to do his own thing, and his own thing is uh, building supply stores. He's he's a builder, a contractor, and he loves to he loves to go to the uh, Habitat for Humanity restores and these places that sell predominantly uh, used or resale building supplies, secondhand stuff. Uh, he tries not to buy new uh, unless he absolutely has to, you know, cut down on his carbon footprint. Yay! So yes, anyway, off to do his own thing, and I spent two hours at Music Millennium, went and had lunch, and then another two hours at uh, Everyday Music over on the east side of town also on Sandy Boulevard. And the wonderful thing about uh, that plan of attack is all three places, the two record stores and the uh, uh, diner, City State Diner, are all within walking distance of each other. So I get to avoid public transportation uh, during the uh, ongoing pandemic and I get some exercise, which I have been sorely lacking since I have not been going to the office to work uh, except for one day a week. So. Uh, yays all around, I guess you'd say. So, yeah, as you saw in the uh, intro there, in the, in the first part of the video, I had lots of fun, and I told you about some of the ha goings on. One thing I forgot to tell you about on my walk from lunch to Everyday Music was I passed by, after lunch of course, I passed by a little fish and chips place right there on Burnside. It's basically, it's kind of like a bar thing, just a window cut out of the side of the, the face of the building. So it's like right there on the street and they seem to have a nice little menu of uh, you know fish and chips and a few drinks and it's like I'm not always in the mood for fish. I'm not often in the mood for fish but for some reason that would have sounded good. So it's like darn if I'd known about that place ahead of time I would have stopped there to eat. Uh, although I don't think as I recall they didn't have any places to sit right there at the place so I would have had to have bought my food and go looking for a place to sit and eat. But anyway uh, the weather was very nice up there so that was uh, that would have been no problem having to look for a place to eat when it's it's fairly pleasant a little cooler than it was supposed to be that day but uh, anyway yeah lots of fun good weather what what more can you ask for for a day in portland i mean i, I would have loved to have had more than just two hours at uh, at both of the stores but when the alternative is not being able to go up there at all you know which choice i'm going to make right but anyway, after about another two hours of browsing at Everyday Music, uh, my brother eventually met me there, and uh, well, he browsed there a little bit too. Uh, he likes to, uh, he likes movies much more than music, so he concentrated on the uh, DVD and Blu-ray section. Uh, and then we drove home. So yes, a fun if brief whirlwind trip up to Portland. But as I said, between a quick one-day trip and no trip at all, I'm going to take the one-day trip. Uh, and one of the arguable benefits of being limited to two hours uh, at any one store is you might be liable to spend less money than you would uh, if you browsed a little bit more. And that's that's pretty much the case here, I, I'd say. Uh, I budgeted myself to $100. I spent a little bit more than that, but not much more. But I came home with one Blu-ray, one cassette, two LPs, and uh, 34 CDs. Yes. I keep saying I'm going to buy more vinyl and fewer CDs, but, well, things like this happen. So, uh, yes. Now, you can probably guess, based on the number of items I bought against the amount of money I spent, that the first places I went in both of the stores, Music Millennium and Everyday Music, were the bargain CD sections. And you would be correct. So, yes, this video I'm going to show you here is the bargain CD section at Music Millennium. It's up on the balcony level, the mezzanine. You go up this really funky little staircase here, and you pass by the country LPs on the left, the racks there, and this uh, little stand -em up here rack is where the bargain CDs are. And, uh, yes, not a bad selection at all, really. And what I didn't realize when I was filming this video was that on the other side of this rack, were more bargain CDs. Uh, the last time I was there, there was something other than bargain CDs on the opposite side of that rack. It was, I don't know, it was world music or something like that. But anyway, uh, so yes, it was a very pleasant surprise that uh, since the last time I'd been there, they basically doubled the amount of bargain CDs. And as you could see in the little cards there in that rack, uh, all the CDs on both sides of that rack were two bucks each. So yes, plenty of good stuff there. I bought a handful of things, which I will show you in just a minute. Uh, I bought much more 
uh, bargain music at Everyday Music. And before I show you everything that I bought, I wanted to give you this one last clip. Uh, this is a clip that I've been promising you guys for the last three Portland videos, I think. I kept forgetting to do it, and then, you know, the pandemic hit, of course, and wasn't able to make a trip up to Portland for almost a year. And then it was yet another year before I made another trip up there. So, yes, this is the bargain CD section at Everyday Music. And, uh, yes, it uh, starts here. This isn't all of it, though. This is all of it. Yes, the bargain CDs end there, and I'm going backwards along the racks. They just keep going and going and going and going and going. And you see there we have, oh, no, no, we're not done yet. Across the aisle, there's more, more and more. And, yes, as it goes all the way to uh, all the way up to the A's, which start right there. So yes, as you can see, just the bargain CD section at Everyday Music uh, on the east side is probably bigger than a lot of other stores' CD sections, period. All the CDs that they have. So uh, yes, if you are looking for bargain basement CDs, uh, Everyday Music on the east side of town in Portland is the place to go to. Um, the downtown Everyday Music, I have not been there in over a year. Uh, they recently had to, for some reason, vacate the larger uh, uh, section of the store. They were divided into two spaces. They had to vacate the larger size side of the store and move everything they had into the smaller side. And of course, I'm sure they had to get rid of a lot. I don't know if they transferred some of their stuff to the Sandy store or what happened, but uh, I haven't been there since they consolidated and compacted their space. So I wouldn't be able to tell you what the bargain CD section is like in everyday music downtown right now. Uh, but hopefully soon. Um, I, I'm hoping next year I'll be able to get back downtown because I really miss going into Powell's Books uh, as well. I haven't been there in, in over a year, so yeah. But anyway, enough of my babbling. You guys are here for the main attraction, which is what did I buy up in Portland yesterday? All the goodies that I bought. Well, I'm not going to show you all of them because that would probably make this video excruciatingly long, but I'm going to show you most of them, so I'm going to try and go through them fairly quickly. Uh, the one and only cassette that I bought was by British rock group Slade. It is uh, their what turned out to be their final album. I found out after the fact when I looked them up on Wikipedia. You boys make big noise. Uh, yes, uh, and I bought it for the wonderful price of $1. And uh, yeah, I have one other Slade album on vinyl. Keep Your Hands Off My Power Supply, I think is the name of it. And it was a it, had, it went under a different title in the UK. This was the, that was its uh, American title. So yes, that one and this one on cassette are the only Slate albums that I own. But uh, yes, uh, that other album, the one I've got on LP, is very entertaining. So maybe this one will be just as entertaining. And for one dollar, it's not a huge loss if it isn't. And now as for the two LPs, um, the one that I was not on my list that I decided to go ahead and get is by Pinkard and Bowden. And this is a country comedy duo that was popular in the 80s and I think early 90s. And it's an interesting story of how I came to know about these guys. One of their songs was featured on the Dr. Demento show years and years ago, 20 plus, 25, 30 years ago. And I really enjoyed it. And so I bought the CD that that song came from. And that was actually their third album. It was a live album. And for 25 years, that was the only Pinkerton Bound CD or album that I ever owned until just a couple weeks ago, actually, not a lie, just a couple weeks ago, I was poking through the comedy LPs at House of Records, and they had uh, their second album, the one preceding that one, and it had been there for years, it, you know, sitting there, the price sticker said it was from 2009 or something like that, so it's been there for a long, long time, and I just never bothered looking for it, and so I picked that one up, and then yesterday, they had, this is their first album, uh, Writers in Disguise. So yeah, they, they do a lot of uh, funny skits and funny songs, and they're, they're a little bit on the uh, profane side or, or suggestive side, so oh, PG-13 possibly R-rated in some cases, but uh, they are still very, very funny, kind of uh, a predecessor of sorts to the um, Blue Collar Comedy Tour guys, you know, uh, uh, Jeff Foxworthy and Ron White and those guys. So. Um, and I don't know if they're joking about this or not, but uh, special. And just as I, I giggled just a second ago, I just realized it said special guest stars. Uh, supposedly they have Anne Marie, the Osmond Brothers, Don Henley, Glenn Fry, Jackson Brown, Jennifer Warnes, and Michael Martin Murphy supposedly appear on this album. I have no idea if they're just pulling our legs, but. Uh, I guess I'll find out, and I'm definitely uh, entertained. We'll be looking forward to listening to that one. And uh, the other LP I got was on my shopping list. It was 
High Infidelity by Ario Speedwagon. I've got this one on CD. I've had it for on CD for a while, but uh, as you may know, I have been lately looking to uh, trade up some of my uh, CDs for their vinyl counterparts. So I was looking forward to picking this one up. $5 for this one, and it was $4 for the Pinkard Bowden. So yes, a good uh, good purchases there. The jacket is a little bit worn, you know, a little bit of ring wear, uh, but the vinyl, the, the record itself looked great. So uh, yeah, good stuff in the vinyl category and uh, cassette categories. And now it's onto the pile of CDs that I picked up yesterday. Um, yes, the vast majority of them, I'd say 80% about, uh, I found in the bargain section, so I paid $2 or less for those. So yeah, I, I, got, I got a lot of bang for my buck, I guess you'd say. And uh, these first two titles are actually two disc titles that I got each for $2. So yes, uh, twice the bang for my buck, I guess you'd say. Uh, the first one is uh, one of the few ones that I got at Music Millennium's uh, bargain section, but uh, it was a good uh, good grab. A uh, two-disc live set by Elton John. It's called Here and There. Uh, the Here disc is live in London, and the There disc is live in New York. So I, I like uh, Elton John's studio albums, so I can't imagine not liking a live set uh, from him. And then the other two-disc set is by George Gershwin. And this one I almost passed by. Uh, you might recall in my bargain bag uh, recently, uh, there was a Gershwin CD, and I really enjoyed it, and so I, maybe subliminally, I had Gershwin on the brain when I was uh, searching the bargain racks, but this one uh, I paid special attention to because it is by uh, the Cincinnati Pops Orchestra, conducted by Eric Kunzel, and I've got several of the Cincinnati Pops albums of movie and TV themes, you know, that kind of stuff, and so this is this is the first straight-ahead classical uh, Cincinnati Pops album that I got, and the Cincinnati Pops Orchestra is fantastic. I have never been disappointed in a release of theirs, so, uh, oh, I stand corrected. No, I do have other classical-oriented uh, Cincinnati Pops CDs, so forget I said that, but yes, uh, a great orchestra from a great conductor, the late Eric Kunzel. He passed away about 10 years ago, so yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, great. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy that one. I have no doubt I'm going to enjoy that one. And then uh, these next four are actually by artists that I have uh, never heard or never listened to before. Uh, two of them that I have heard of and two of them I haven't heard of. But uh, the first one here is uh, Beth Orton, her debut album Trailer Park. And the reason I got this one was because, uh, actually, just a few days ago, coincidentally, uh, Skip, the former owner of Skip's Records, uh, posted about this one saying that it was one of the best debut albums he has ever heard by any artist. And so on the strength of that, I saw it in the bargain section. I decided to pick it up. So if I'm disappointed in this, Skip, you owe me $2. Uh, yeah, $1.95 for the disc and a, a five cent penalty fee, I guess you'd say. But I, I have faith in Skip's recommendation, so I, I doubt I'll be disappointed. I haven't listened to any of these yet, so because I just got home last night. So, uh, and the other one that I have heard of, but also have never checked out, is a Scandinavian pop group, I believe, called The Ark, and this is their album State of the Ark. And I believe this was their only one that was released here in the states. I could be wrong about that. Anybody out there who's familiar with The Ark, uh, if correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, I had heard good things about this from a blogger years and years ago. This, this was one of their favorite bands, and I just never bothered checking out. This was before Spotify and the uh, streaming music services, so I would have had to have found uh, sound clips on web stores and stuff, and being a European group, I never did. So, But now I get to check them out, finally. And then these other two artists I had not ever heard of. This is Men, Women, and Children. This is their debut album, and there was another CD by another group that I'd never heard of, and I looked them both up on Wikipedia. One of them was a, an electro-pop or dance-pop or electro-rock group, and the other one was straight-ahead indie rock, so I can't remember which is which, but I think these guys were the uh, electro-pop act. So, uh, but yeah, looking forward to listening to it. Uh, still sealed, never been opened, but it was a cutout because the, uh, the little notch cut out of the side there. So, yeah, looking forward to hearing that one. And uh, this next one, Pete Murray, I had to look him up. He is an Australian singer-songwriter whom I had never heard of. So uh, decided to go ahead and pick this one up just for the heck of it. You know, when something is $2, what have you got to lose, right? And if you don't like it, you can send it to Goodwill or 
possibly put it up on Discogs or whatever. And then these next few CDs, or at least the, the first two in this little batch here, uh, you could say they are bargain bag inspired pickups because the, the artists I uh, caught wind of through recent bargain bags and like their stuff, so was kind of uh, on the hunt unofficially for them. And yes, this first one, Michael Penn, he was uh, just recently, just last month, I think, I got his sophomore album in a bargain bag, really enjoyed it. And this is his debut album, March, so I decided to pick that one up. And again, it was it, this one was just 95 cents, and it was the, the green price tags are scuff CDs, so they're the CD the surfaces of the CDs are not perfect, but this one uh, you know I was a little bit worried about it, but I sprayed it with uh, uh, eyeglass lens cleaner and wiped it, and it came totally clean. So so much the better, right? And then this next one uh, you'll recall a few months ago I was taken very much by surprise by a Sarah Brightman CD that was in a bargain bag, La Luna. So I picked up Eden, her, uh, I think this was her first, her first album, maybe? I can't remember. But yeah, for $1.95, why not? And then uh, I can't remember if uh, Tori Amos CD was in a recent bargain bag or not. It, it might have been one that I bought at a different store uh, in the bargain section. But uh, yes, they had her, her third and fourth albums. I have her first two. So her third and fourth albums, Boys for Pele and From the Choir Girl Hotel. They were both $1.95 each. So I, I tell you, you can just find crazy, crazy bargains in the bargain CD section anymore. And then this next raft of CDs here are just filling some gaps in discographies that I had. Uh, this one, Mellow Gold by Beck. I actually have all of his albums on CD from Odelay up through Colors. And so this was the one before Odelay, before Odelay, I think, that I was missing. So I decided to go ahead and pick that one up. And then uh, I am continuing uh, my ongoing uh, building of my Bon Jovi discography. I got Keep the Faith, an earlier album, and a more recent album, What About Now? Both uh, for, for decent prices. Th these were not bargain CDs. And then... Uh, Paula Cole. I am a fan of Paula Cole's album This Fire, which was her huge, huge uh, breakthrough smash success. So I decided to pick up her predecessor album, uh, Harbinger, which uh, may be aptly titled, I guess, considering the success that uh, This Fire was, her following album. And then another group that I mentioned recently, this was in my recent pickups video that I did a few weeks ago, a group called Remy Zero. Uh, they did the title song from the TV series Smallville. That was on their album, The Golden Hum. Uh, this is, I believe, their predecessor album, Villa Elaine. Decided to pick that one up and give it a try, uh, especially since it was in the bargain section. And then a group called Guster, which I am quite fond of. Uh, this is their album, Ganging Up on the Sun. This is, uh, I have two of their albums, and this is the one after those two. So, yeah. I had had it once before, and it fell victim to a Space Crunch CD purge, so decided to pick it up again. And then we have a group that I enjoy called Better Than Ezra. It's a group from uh, New Orleans. Uh, the, the lead singer's got a great, great distinctive voice, and this just the band is just all around great. And uh, this again, this is an album that I had long, long ago and foolishly got rid of. And it was actually in the recently arrived used CDs, so decided to grab it again. And I, I did kind of splurge and maybe spent a little bit more on some things than I was uh, than I would have otherwise. It's just because I hadn't been to Portland in ten months, and who knows how long it's going to be before I get to go up there again. So I I decided to go just a little bit crazy, a little bit crazier than I would otherwise uh, go. Uh, but anyway, on to the next one. Um, Don Henley. This is his album Cass County. I realized uh, just out of the blue there uh, at Music Millennium, I realized this was the only Don Henley album that I didn't have yet. I actually inherited three of his albums from my sister's CD collection, and after that happened, I went and picked up his first album on CD, and uh, I, I thought that completed my collection, but somehow I missed, completely forgot about Cass County. And yes, this is the deluxe edition, along with uh, two extra songs from the Target exclusive edition. So. Uh, 18 songs on this thing and just five dollars and they had the standard edition also which only had I think 12 12 or 13 songs but they also wanted five dollars for that one so it's kind of like it's a no-brainer you know get a third more music for the same price so yeah a great purchase there and then these last two little clusters of CDs here uh, I guess you could say these are instant discographies uh, yeah, I just decided to, as I, as I said, I went a little bit more hog wild than I normally would on this trip and uh, just decided to go with my gut and pick these up. Now, a group that I I like probably more than the amount of releases that I have in my 
collection would let on is Crowded House. They were an alternative rock band or yeah, I guess you'd say alternative rock band from the late 80s, early 90s. And the only album release that I have of theirs is it is a two disc, two CD, one DVD set. Their first album packaged with their greatest hits and a DVD of their videos. But uh, for a long time now, I've been wanting to just go ahead and pick up their studio albums. And I decided to, I found all four of their first four studio albums they're at uh, Music Millennium and decided to go ahead and pick them up. Four bucks a piece, a piece. so uh, yeah, not a huge investment, but uh, it's, it's been a while. And they were yet again another group that I foolishly... I must have been possessed by uh, not so much an evil spirit as a stupid spirit back in the day and got rid of so many CDs that I now regret having gotten rid of. And so now I am uh, correcting past mistakes, I guess you'd say. Uh, so yes, Crowded House, I got their first four albums, and I also got a four-album block uh, from Toad the Wet Sprocket. And I guess you could say this also in a way is a bargain bag inspired pickup because a few months back uh, there was a Toad the Wet Sprocket CD single in one of my bargain bags and that kind of inspired me, pl planted the seed in my brain to pick up some of their uh, albums. And at one point I had their greatest hits but I don't think I'd ever had any of their studio albums. So yes, very much looking forward to listening to that indie rock act from the... Uh, 90s, late 90s, I guess. So yes, a fantastic, great, very successful trip up to Portland. Got a whole bunch of great goodies, and I cannot wait to start listening to them. So anyway, that'll do it for my recap of my latest Portland adventure. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.